and uh, my th three big guys, uh, Werner Heisenberg, uh, Niels Bohr, and uh, Erwin Schrodinger, worked uh, together in, uh, I forget what other time, I think it was like the 20s. And uh, Heisenberg discovered very quickly that, uh, you know, at the quantum level to, uh, to detect uh, the electron, you know, you have to shoot another electron or another something at it uh, to know where it is. And uh, when you uh, shoot something at it, you disturb it necessarily. And uh, getting uh, back to motion, too, this is a good connection. So if, if, if you miss that point about uh, time moves across points, uh, not within points, okay, it's between the points. And another uh, big insight here, I hope I don't lose my place, is uh, if, if you take that idea that it's between the points uh, rather than in the points. That's the same thing that you get to with irrational numbers, okay? And that's going to be uh, part of the prize of my what's the point uh, talk. But now, let me hope, hopefully I can get back. So I'll uh, get back to he he Heisenberg. So uh, basically, uh, the result uh, uh, of this was the uh, famous uncertainty principle. Oh, and I, I jumped ahead too quick, I think. To, to, to find uh, the veloci velocity of an electron, you have to hit it twice. Because, again, you hit it once. I mean, you only know it's there. You have to have a, a, a later point in time to say, okay, and now it's there, and so therefore it's going at this rate. So that uh, also disturbs. So, uh, and uh, it's, uh, he compared it to uh, maybe a cuckoo clock where, you know, you could see one side or the other, but you could never see both at one time. And uh, that was the uncertainty. That, that is, you can't, if you want to know the location, you can find that out quite accurately. If not exactly, I, I'm not sure. Or if you want to find the rate, you can find it. But you can't find both the rate and location. And uh, going off even deeper here, going to my other big uh, star, Niels Bohr, he came up with, well, you have to, uh, and uh, this, uh, this too deals with the uh, double slit experiment, you know, on the reality that the electron seems to go through both slits. But when you look, it only goes through one and acts like an electron, but when you don't look, it, it acts like a wave, you know, that, that kind of duality. And that's another kind of duality. <laughs> that's a duality we have a hard time, you know, dealing with. Uh, so that, that requires a uh, paradigm shift in thinking about, uh, you know, stuff. Uh, the difference between energy and mass, but I, I'm losing uh, track now. So uh, yeah, so these uh, the trio came up with this, uh, uh, and it's mainly uh, Niels Bohr that uh, this Copenhagen interpretation. Yeah, you have to take uh, like a uh, you know you have to put a stake in the ground. You have to take a philosophical point of view of what the results of uh, this uh, this means. And, and this was really, I think, uh, more of the double split, uh, double slit experiment and uh, finding out that uh, there is this uh, uncertainty principle when uh, investigating uh, things at the quantum uh, level. So uh, the Copenhagen interpretation, and this is what Einstein had such a problem with, uh, uh, says, uh, I mean, you can say it more succinct in more succinct uh, scientific terms, but to be able to relate it to uh, more of the everyday person, uh, it means uh, that really there is not a reality uh, to uh, the position or velocity of a particle, a subatomic particle, an electron without it being observed. So maybe stating that example, what that might, might mean, well, if you find the electron 
Unless, say, you find it's a velocity and it's a direction, you know. So you get two blips and you say, okay, well, you know, it's going this way at uh, this speed, whatever. Therefore, before, just before I looked at it, it must have been coming from this direction, you know, like a bullet. You know, it would be like a ballistics uh, deal. But, uh, uh-uh, nah. No, 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 not Niels Bohr, no. And this is what uh, Einstein had so much trouble with. He felt that there must be an underlying uh, reality. Uh, it's just that we're not able to see it because it's so small and we have this uncertainty principle. And maybe, uh, you know, uh, we didn't know where it was until we looked. But having looked, we could deduce that it must have been back there uh, before, you know. And if we wouldn't have disturbed it, it would have been over there. You know, it has this uh, reality to it, whether it's uh, looked at or not. But uh, Copenhagen uh, says no. So, and, and this relates to this uh, superposition uh, of the uh, uh, electron uh, or any subatomic particle that it uh, goes into this uh, wave uh, state, this uh, superposition, and it emits these, uh, and this is to extend to this this. Einstein, EPR, you know, debate. Um, oh, I lost it right there. Oh, I hate when that happens. Uh, okay, yeah. So, uh, yeah, extends the EPR debate. Uh, no, I wasn't. I wasn't going to mention. Um, Entanglement, uh, because uh, their discussions uh, did involve entanglement, which is a whole different deal. It's basically two uh, particles that are entangled. One can immediately affect the other. Oh, it was. Yes, it, yes, it was. I'm back on track. Yeah. So the waves, yeah. So the, uh, the, so the waves uh, represent uh, waves of probability of where you would find the electron, just as it does on the, on the double slit experiment. If you were to look... Uh, so this is uh, the superposition. So these waves are sort of like, well, I mean, do they really exist? I mean, they just sort of like sound like mathematical probabilities. They don't sound like real kind of things. You know, and then when you look, all of a sudden the particle just shows up at one spot and the whole uh, wave, they call it the collapse of the wave function, happens. So um, getting that uh, back to uh, Einstein, Paldusky, Rosen, how did I have that there? Okay. Oh, yes, 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 yeah. So Einstein supposed, uh, and I, I, I don't think the term came from him, I think there was another name involved too, uh, hidden variables. It's like, uh, and this is a very good example, it's like when you flip a coin, okay, you don't know whether it's going to land heads or tails. You know, it has uh, equal probability of landing on either side because of the way it's uh, structured. Uh, and so you can't predict it until you see the results. Well, that's not true. Because you just lack... Uh, enough information to know what it will be. Because if you knew the exact uh, ballistics involved, uh, in all the details, I mean mathematically, figuring out, uh, you know, using Newtonian mathematics, you would know the outcome. Uh, but you don't know that information. So the term was hidden variables. Uh, that is, well... There's something hidden here that we, we don't know, and uh, it, it just looks to us like, you know, like the particle is happening this way. Well, uh, long story short, mathematically, in a way, I can't figure out some Scottishman or Irishman, I think it was Bell, figured out that, no, there's no hidden variables. This is the truth. At the quantum level, things are just, like, statistical, and uh, there's not a reality uh, without a, a, an observation. So, uh, the electron 
acting in that way, it's a very strange particle. And now let me get back a little more pragmatic. You know, the electron, uh, you know, it's been uh, very useful. I mean, it's the workhorse uh, for us if it didn't uh, work the way it works. And it seems like every, you know, electron exactly the same. And if they were any different, uh, you know, it wouldn't work that way. Uh, what else was I going to say? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not only electricity, too. And I might say it's electricity that causes, uh, it really, it's the... Uh, goes down to uh, Pauli, uh, the exclusion uh, principle, uh, which basically uh, says, you know, uh, you can only get so close, uh, electrons can only get so close, and then their negative forces oppose each other. And, and so when you hit something and you smash it, nothing really touches. It's just that the electrons get so close that they push the atoms uh, and molecules in the stuff uh, to, enough to, uh, to dent it. So uh, uh, the point I was making is chemistry. Yeah, chemistry. I mean, chemistry is totally, not totally, but, you know, I mean, it's a, a based on, uh, you know, ele electron uh, uh, clouds and shells and valences and uh, whether a atom is uh, electrically neutral or wants to acquire an electron or give up an electron. So, uh, you know, our amino acids, our proteins, uh, you know, all of our long chain molecules, they're all uh, based upon, uh, the, well, not only the uh, electron, but the, but the way the uh, nucleus and all the uh, protons and uh, neutrons uh, work. Uh, but uh, let me get back on track here. I don't want to lose any of my points here. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, back when I was on uh, Richard Feynman, uh, there's another, and he uh, got a Nobel Prize for that uh, normalization process. I guess even, even though they weren't proud of it, I guess it was uh, pragmatically uh, very helpful. But uh, there's another concept, and this uh, deals too. So these are all things that uh, deal uh, with uh, consciousness, and I want to state it uh, maybe in a bigger way right now here. I want to use the term a uh, independent uh, existence. Is that what I called it? Yeah, I independent reality, yeah. That, uh, you know, one thinks that, uh, you know, you're here and the universe is out there and never the twain uh, shall meet. And, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're separate uh, from it. And uh, you're... Uh, uh, you know, you're you're just observing the way everything else is working, and uh, if you weren't here observing it, it would all still, you know, just be the same old uh, deal. Sort of, you know, if the tree falls in the forest, you know, it's still going to fall whether I'm there to hear it or not. So, uh, this idea of independent reality. But uh, what I wanted to say about uh, Feynman was also, uh, which is related to this, the, you know, the reality of uh, the electron, you know, it's like a, a thing, is, uh, it's called Sum Over Histories. And uh, they uh, use it mathematically. When they, uh, well, when they know, uh, let's say an electron is, is here, and they know it's here, and they want to calculate its path uh, between the two, they just don't do a straight line. They calculate every possible path uh, that it could take without the breaking you know, any time laws uh, between those two points. And they sum all of those histories. And basically, they get more accurate results than they would if they just uh, plotted the straight line uh, trajectory and I guess it's more uh, accurate because uh, it, it does a canceling out of all these obtuse uh, paths, which would be possible, but uh, much less probable. So I found that interesting, too. But that's more about uh, Richard Feynman than about my topic. So, uh, yeah, getting back to uh, independent reality. Yeah, and I'm going to try to 
close it up here on uh, this one. I uh, feel this will be a weaker uh, closing for the Trinity. I wish I had a big, well, uh, the, big, the big deal will be uh, come see my uh, what's the point. Because uh, there I, uh, I've really been holding a lot of this con, uh, uh, content uh, for, uh, I need an auto, uh, a, a visual kind of aid. Uh, I think it would help in the uh, process and uh, keep me focused on the topic. So as I wandered away, I'd have a line that I could go back to to know where I could uh, restart. But uh, having done, I think I've uh, run out of gas, but uh, let me just uh, close with the, um, and I'll just sort of plant this in your mind, uh, uh, independent reality uh, being out there. That is, uh, you're very much a participant in what you're um, sensing and don't think you aren't. Because if you think uh, that uh, glass is blue uh, behind me and, uh, you know, that uh, bud light means uh, something, uh, you know, ethereal uh, to you, like a liquid, uh, I mean, uh, you know, uh, all this is, you know, going into your brain. Uh, and uh, either consciously or unconsciously is uh, taking, uh, you know, having its uh, consequence. Uh, you know, there's a uh, karma from that and there's a uh, reaction too. And there are... Uh, new paths uh, being wired uh, in your brain uh, from uh, pursuing maybe areas that uh, weren't uh, so well uh, trodden uh, before. So uh, what uh, fires together, wires together. I love that. Uh, comes from uh, what the bleep do we know. Yeah, it's a uh, case of, uh, you know, when you do uh, something and it's enjoyable, uh, you know, they sort of get more connections there and uh, your brain gets wired to that kind of uh, reality as, as my has uh, become wired to my higher level uh, reality of existence. But, uh, you know, if a... Um, now, we, it's hard to, hard to conceive of uh, a, a, a place in our universe, at least, that isn't based upon, um, you know, uh, quarks and electrons and atoms as we know them. That would, that would be hard for me to conceive of. But if there were another, uh, if there is a multiverse, you know, there, there could be something based, uh, you know, totally different. And uh, if they, you know, but, but even in our universe, uh, just on the, the, pos the way things could combine, uh, it could be a different environment. So our um, uh, Goldilocks uh, principle, uh, oh, I know that's its name, uh, Lisa, anthropic uh, principle, yeah, I mean, it's just we came about here. I mean, it, there could be, you know, very well something else that we can't conceive of that would end up in uh, being, uh, you know, uh, uh, apparently as intelligently, uh, uh, you know, controlling uh, the present to con uh, to uh, manipulate its uh, uh, what it feels is its future. So, uh, so, just an alien from our uh, universe comes here. I mean, uh, no, that, that glass isn't blue. A, a, a alien might not even see electromagnetic. Uh, well, probably see, would see electromagnetic. I, I, see, too. I don't know what you mean by see. I mean, that's one way of uh, perception. Uh, maybe it feels it all over its skin. And maybe it only feels the x-ray. I mean, maybe a gamma ray environment. I mean, uh, you know, this is... Uh, Sounds weird, but, uh, I mean, you know, we are prejudiced uh, against our environment and uh, our uh, thinking and uh, think that we run the show. Well, we might temporarily run the show, but um, we collectively, I like this very much too, I'm going to steal this from my guru. You know, uh, we collectively, at the human race, uh, think ourselves separate and uh, maybe um, bestowed uh, by uh, religious uh, forces uh, to perpetuate the 
that existence. To love the beloved. Well, uh, if we're on top, then uh, we're in charge, okay? And uh, we don't even have to think about the rest of the universe. We just have to worry about our own little back 40. And uh, we might be in charge, uh, but uh, it's temporarily. I mean, we're dirtying our own linen here. Uh, it's obvious. Uh, we're in denial. Okay, uh, get with it. I mean, make that brain work. See uh, the reality of what's to come. And if you take the opinion that uh, Neville Chamberlain did, well, that all may be true. And this is very much, you know, what I'm finding in most people, you know, including all family members. Well, peace in our time. That, that very well might be true, but I am just one little person, and uh, probably unconsciously, it's not going to be in my lifetime. If you have some kids, uh, which there aren't many, uh, I mean, that might, you know, uh, make you think a little more about their future, but hell, you got to pay to get them educated, you know, and in a good environment and find a good whatever. So, uh, you know, I mean, how much more do you have to define it? Okay. So, think of the unity of the earth. Yeah, this is a good way to end. Okay. Yeah. Gaia. Okay, I love that concept. You know, and the Earth uh, very much is trying to recover. But, uh, you know, it's reaching its limit. And I hate to see the suffering that's going on and the extinction of all the other species, of the diversity that's taken so long to develop. Not that it'll come back. This will be the sixth one. I mean, uh, hey, uh, well, keep on trying till we get it right. Okay, yeah, uh, this to me is, is not it, okay? I, I'm not seeing insight here, no. I, I'm just trying to look at this objectively over my lifetime. Yeah, because I grew up, I was born in California, 1944, Lombok. We have, we have home movies of what it used to look like. Although there might not be massive uh, developments in Lompoc, uh, you know, California uh, in the uh, 60s, L.A., had the population of, uh, uh, oh, I'm getting lost here, how does this go? Yeah, the population of L.A. Oh, I can't get that one. Have to, we'll have to edit that one out. The population of L.A. in the 60s is what... I'm trying to think. California. Oh, the population of California in the 60s. The whole state. Finally, I got it. And I have to stop here. I embarrass myself. The population of L.A. in the 60s, when I was there in junior college, was uh, what the state of California, oh, I lost it again. So, retake. The population of L.A. in the 60s. Is what California Oh, the population of California in the 60s is what the population of L.A. is today. Whew. Let me get out of here while I'm getting good. My, I, I'm starting to, I'm starting to uh, go into duality here. 
I need to get the, I need to get my unity back.